Hello everyone. We're going to do a little bit more review from chapter 14. One of the topics in chapter 14 was the motion of a pendulum. And we certainly talked a lot about that in class and you'll recall that we had the bowling ball pendulum that we used. Let's remind ourselves about these different things that are inside of this equation here. The, f the biggest thing that people always tend to forget for us is I know that that's a little funny looking in there. That script L, that is not a one. That is the length of the rope of the pendulum and that is from the pivot point. So I would have a pendulum that's pivoting about some point up here and there's some mass on it. The L, the script L there, is the length from the pivot point down to the center of mass. Often people forget that the L is involved in there and when they're trying to read the equation sheet they see that as a 1 and that's a, that's a good way to uh, accidentally mess up this problem. The other thing that we have over here is the period. That's the time per cycle. Remember that is a back and a forth. So if the bowling ball started up here, okay, so at some time it was up here, that would be it swinging down to this location, going back up to here, back down to the middle and then back to the original starting spot over here. So that is one full cycle to go back and forth. And so it is the time where time is in the numerator, the time per one cycle. We're just going to do a quick sample problem where I'm going to have a solve for G mostly because that is the most intense algebraically to solve for. So let's practice that. In a problem statement, you guys remember how this always goes. We say something like you're abducted by aliens and you wake up in a room. You need to fi figure out what little g is for some reason. So you construct a pendulum. You have some rope available to you. Your pendulum ends up having a length, an L, of let's call it 32 centimeters. And you have a mass that is 0 0.05 kilograms that you put on the pendulum. You make some measurements and you find that the pendulum goes back and forth, back and forth, let's say 47 times in one minute. This is all of our information that we have available to us and we want to find what little g is. So that is not the period, but it is headed in that direction for us. So that's our time information. We'll just take it one step at a time. Let's first figure out what that period is just to get it out of the way. So T, given that it is the time per cycles, I'm going to go ahead and put in my time per cycles. I had one minute per 47 cycles. However, this is not going to work very well for me to have my time in minutes. The reason is that over here, this needs to be in seconds. Otherwise, it's going to conflict with my gravity that I like to measure in meters per second squared. So I have to do that conversion. So this is going to actually move down and look something like this. 60 seconds per 47 cycles. And I find that T is equal to 1.27, I'll round that to another 7 there, seconds, okay? L needs to be measured in meters so that it doesn't conflict with my preferred units for the gravitational field. So I'm going to do a unit conversion on that. Instead of it being 32 centimeters, it's going to be 0 0.32 meters. And what do I do with the mass? It doesn't actually matter what I do with the mass. Sometimes I give you that information just to make sure that you're paying attention to things. But you'll notice that the mass does not appear at all inside of this equation. And we in fact looked at a few different circumstances where if we add mass to the bob, remember this thing down here is the bob. If we add some mass to that, it doesn't actually influence the, uh, the period of the pendulum under the same arguments that can be made about how a bowling ball and a styrofoam ball will fall at the same rate because of the acceleration due to gravity. 
if we're excluding air resistance. It's that same acceleration due to gravity that is responsible for the back and forth motion and so the mass of the object ends up uh, getting canceled out in the mathematics and doesn't, doesn't influence the period of the pendulum. So I have all of my information here and I'm going to go ahead and plug in. I'm going to say that 1.277 seconds is equal to 2 pi square root of 0 0.32 m over g and I'm trying to solve for g. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi and when you type this in and people should do this themselves as well there's a really common mistake that happens here so those are going to cancel over on that side but we have 1.277 divided by 2 pi make sure that you put that 2 pi in parentheses in the denominator it's not going to come out correct I'll give you the intermediate here if you do this left side so the 1.277 divided by 2 pi correctly it should be 0 0.203 that's rounded a little bit is equal to the square root of 0.32 m over g to get rid of the square root I need to raise both sides to the power of 2 so square both sides so if I go 0 0.203 squared that'll be equal to 0 0.32 meters divided by g so I'm getting there over on the left hand side here this is now 0 0.041 is equal to 0 0.32 meters over g this is in a denominator I'm gonna move it up to the numerator on the left hand side and this is gonna take its place so I'm gonna divide both sides by the 0 0.041 and I'm running out of room a little bit let me clear some space Okay, I took all this information with swapping that G to the left and moving the 0 .041. Uh, I rewrote it up here for a little bit more room. I dropped my units down here, but this, this 0.23 number has units of seconds, but then when it gets squared on both sides, it goes to seconds squared. That's going to be good because this will keep my units in meters per second squared up here. My final answer is that G is equal to 7.75 meters per second squared. And then as a add-on question to that that's really just checking the conceptual might say well what if you doubled the mass of this of the bob double the mass at the end of the pendulum what should happen to the period and the correct answer would be nothing should happen to it because we can see that again from our equation that the mass is not influential on this. Certainly you could solve for other variables and we just pick the one that uh, requires the most algebraic steps just to make sure that we're doing it okay. But if you think you got what's going on, let your computer know.